let's pray together father we thank you for this day we bless your name for what you're doing already thank you lord for the revival fire you bring upon the soul of everyone and we pray that this fire will never die out in jesus name through every brother here every sister here you send this fire to all our local churches all our local communities so that lord the fire of revival and evangelism will burn everywhere without being put off in jesus name we're asking lord that all the promises you have for us your word they'll be ours we'll enjoy them we'll experience them we'll live in the good of them in jesus name this morning we're praying that you'll speak to our very hearts and your word will do good in every life in jesus name Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Thank you very much. We can see now. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. We're told in verse 39 For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. A verse that gives us hope. A verse that gives us encouragement. A verse that makes us to expect a great expectation. A great hope. A great future. A great fullfulness. And a great expectation. This is what encourages us and builds our faith. That whatever it is promised in the word of God. The promise is unto you and to your children and then he says and to all not some not a few not even many not even the majority and to all that are far off even as many as the lord our god shall call and there are times when uh, people do not understand even the prophecies they make the prophecies they give and, and we can't blame them how could they have understood how could moses understand all those prophecies that were given in his own time from genesis all through to deuteronomy a prophet like unto you i will raise up unto them i'll put my word in his mouth and whosoever shall not hear that prophet i'll require it of him and then you come to isaiah unto us a child is born unto us we're told the son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder his name shall be called emmanuel behold a virgin shall conceive and i'm saying how could those prophets understand the depth and the height and the length and the breadth of what they were saying and when peter said the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off i'm sure he did not understand if you understood when god was calling him to go to the house of cornelius or have said yes that is the fulfillment of that prophecy he would have known that this promise is unto all that are far off but he thought it could not be to the house of cornelius here we are you know there are times when we stand here and then we speak the word the word of the lord and it's prophetic it's revelatory and then when it comes to the reality that god is saying here it is now go with it and perform and we say how can this be but you said it you said it by inspiration what you say by the spirit you cannot carry out in the flesh what you understand by the spirit is very very difficult for you when you then after the conference and after the congress and you're relaxed and now you're in the flesh and you're normal and you're natural in that natural state what god spoke through you by the spirit of revelation then it becomes difficult say not so lord and so we're going to again i want to remind you that god never speaks to your mind to your brain never speaks to your natural self never speaks to your tradition it speaks to your faith and he speaks in the spirit and so you have to be very very observant now he's telling us here is january the very first month of the year and he's telling us this is what will be and then when you come to the 10th month of the year from january to october and then the lord is now saying get up you know continue this is what you do if you are not careful what you said in chapter 2 in february you're going to say not so lord in october in the 10th month and that's the reason 
see why the Lord is telling us that we need to take minute details and notice of everything the Lord is telling us for the promises unto you. Give me a good amen. amen. And then he says the promises unto children and then the promises unto all that are far off. Can we say then that the promise of God is not only for the people who are here but the people that are far off in your church location afar off in your community afar off in all the places you don't even know them now but the lord is going to take you to them and the promise is unto all that are far off even as many as the lord our god shall call we're looking at luke chapter 24 i'm reading from verse 49 luke chapter 24 we're reading from verse 49 yeah it's still telling us about that promise it says in luke chapter 24 verse 49 and behold i said the promise of my father father upon you the promise of peter the apostle referred to is the promise of the father and he said the lord jesus christ said i send this unto you but tarry ye in the city of jerusalem until ye be endured with power from on high until 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 you will keep on tarrying until you'll keep on praying until you'll keep on seeking until you'll keep on expecting until you'll keep on knocking at the gate at the door of heaven until you keep on asking and seeking and knocking until you be endured with power from on high have you noticed the people that you know they are knocking at the door and knocking at the door and just a minute before the door is open they say it looks like there's nobody there then they give up and then they go away and then they come back when you come back again you have to start the fire again you have to kindle the fire again you have to start knocking again then you start knocking and knocking and knocking and just about 30 seconds half a minute before the door is open then you say why is it that this fellow is never answering then you go back again by the time they open the door you are gone you come back again you might be doing that for about 10 times or 12 times or 100 times just missing it by one minute but the lord is saying don't miss it today yeah. you will not miss it in jesus name that you keep on knocking keep on tarrying keep on waiting and keep on asking the lord and you know sometimes as we come together like this there are people that say hey, oh, why, why is the jest you know making us to stand up all this long time i'm not making you to stand up i just thought that you wanted something and then if you want something you are telling the lord you are saying now if you go to you know you go to somebody that is give, going to give you the resources of your life that will make you achieve and make you get everything you want to get in life are you going to sit down and then cross your leg and say i just came to ask whether all these resources that will make me successful and fruitful and make me an achiever I, I, you're crossing your leg and sitting down and you're doing like this i just want to know whether you are going to give me what will the fellow do to you <laughs> say this one look at this one is he came with all his pride but you stand up you stand up and if what you are looking for is more than that minor pain in your leg more than that minor thing you're feeling and you're bombarding heaven for the promise is unto you and to your children and to them that are far off even as many as the lord your god our god shall call and the lord said you tarry in jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high this, this is a congress to train and to prepare and to inject you and to impart unto you the power you need for the rest of your life so that your ministry will come to a higher level it will come to a higher level in jesus name and jesus said these are the words of Jesus. He talked about praying and praying and praying and praying and tarrying and waiting, waiting upon the Lord until ye be endued with power from on high, enveloped, surrounded, closed, put inside, immersed with that power, an ocean of power from on high. The Lord will do it. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1. I read from verse 4. I mean, assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. But what's the next word? Wait, but wait for the promise of the Father, says he, 
which says he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water. But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. The Lord, it will not be many days. He will just keep on. He didn't tell them 10 days. It became 10 days finally. But he didn't tell them. It just said not many, not many days hence. And when the Lord is saying, you know, just, you will just say sometime we're going to pray. Sometime we're going to seek the Lord. Sometime we're going to give ourselves to the Lord. And we're going to wait. We're going to tarry. Even if we have to prolong the prayer and miss our breakfast a little this that we are going to get the resources of heaven the power from on high and that envelope of anointing from on high is worth all the waiting i said it's worth all the waiting and whatever you have to whenever you have to wait and whatever time you have to wait for to get it you are going to get it today everybody say power, power. it is coming in jesus name because I know you will tarry i said you will tarry i said you will wait and when you wait and you get it nothing will be able to stand before you in jesus name now it talks about the power of the holy ghost but all the other promises of god are yes and amen look at second corinthians chapter one second corinthians chapter one i'm reading from verse 20 for all the promises of god are in him are ye that means yes and in him amen so let it be unto the glory of god by us it tells us there that all the promise when it says all the promises when it says and the promises unto you we can apply this to every promise the promise of eternal life unto you to your children to those that are far off the promise of cleansing our heart taking away the dynamic nature and the stony heart the promises unto you and to your children and to them that are far off and the promise of healing the promise is unto you and to your children and to them that are far off and the promise at every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon i have given unto you the promises unto you and to your children and also to all them that are far off every promise of the word of god everything we read here that god says i will do this i will do this i will do that that promise is unto you and to all that are far off and the lord will do it for us in jesus name when it says all that means it's universal universal everybody and it's unlimited all the promises even the unusual power of the holy ghost the lord will grant to us in jesus name three things we're going to look at number one desiring god's universal promise all everybody all everybody god giving it to all desiring god's universal promise number two demanding that's asking god's unlimited provision demanding that's asking requesting demanding god's unlimited provision number three declaring god's the gospel with unusual power declaring the gospel with unusual power when you have this power of the holy ghost the lord will turn you and change you to another man you'll not be like you were before things will change i said things will change your declaration of the gospel proclamation of the gospel preaching of the gospel everything will change because you come with new anointing and new power i even pray that before the preaching ends up i will come upon you because it's still possible god has not changed while peter was speaking in the house of cornelius the holy ghost came upon all them that heard the word and all of us here today you are candidates for renewed power renewed anointing and renewed authority coming upon your life in jesus name let's come to number one let's come to number one designing god's universal promise we're looking at acts of the apostles chapter 2 acts chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 16 over there acts chapter 2 verse 16 the holy ghost came upon the people in the early in the early church you know watching in the upper room and if the people came together because of what they heard and what they saw they thought they were drunk and then peter rose up and said these people are not drunk it's just the third hour of the day in verse 16 but this is that which was spoken by the prophet 
Joel. I'm going to tell you something very important. Look up here, everybody. And you know, sometimes there are people that they read the Bible and they pick, they, they pick just a little sin there. And that little sin is the only thing they seek about. But I want to tell you something that this that I read to you now, that Peter just rose up. And I want to tell you that he didn't prepare an outline. He didn't even know that all these uh, thousands of people were gathered together. He didn't know that they will be mocking. He didn't know that this will be their reaction or this will be their response. It, 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 they, they were watching that. They didn't even know it was that moment and that hour the Holy Ghost and the power will come upon them. But Jesus had said, when that Holy Ghost, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth is come, it will bring to your remembrance everything i have said unto you that's one thing not only that it will guide you into all truth and it will show you reveal things you didn't know it will reveal it unto you yes i understand the spoken tongues there great wonderful speaking in tongues but something greater than speaking in tongues is what you'll find here immediately the people gathered together it just stood up and all the words came everything you ought to say came and he said this is that unprepared not premeditated and then the revelation came immediately that's the holy ghost you know peter and you know that all the times you know when jesus was crucified and then he said you are one of them fear paralyzed him fear made him to forget all the promises and commitment he made to the lord but the holy ghost came and powered him Holy Ghost has come, power has come. Amen. And then he said, this is that revelation. The Holy Ghost guiding them into all truth and making the appropriate application immediately. And then you find in Acts verse, verse 17, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams and on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall tell me prophesy it came to him immediately when you have this holy ghost the appropriate word will come to you immediately and then the interpretation will come to you immediately everything you have heard before everything you have known before and you're saying how can i get that back i don't have chance to get my notes now everything will come because of the presence of the holy ghost he is the author of this scripture and because he is the author he is also the instructor he is also the interpreter and he will give us all that we need to know about the scripture when that holy ghost is present and preeminent and prominent in our lives and our ministry we're looking at jewel we're looking at where peter took that from and without having a copy of the bible in his hand he just quoted it just like that and that's what the holy ghost will do he'll make you keep to the scriptures it will remind you of the scriptures it will interpret the scriptures unto you it will remind you of things you have had before that you're forgetting and then it will guide you into the application at the proper time to the people at the right time we're looking at joel chapter 2 verse 20 28 and it shall come to pass at a word that i will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days i will pour out my spirit it tells us then that the lord is going to do this and, and that's what he said he said this promise is unto you and it's unto your children and it's unto tell me the rest all that are far off even as many as the lord our god shall call that promise is coming upon you i say it's a universal promise was it peter alone that knew that far away in the old testament even moses that was his passion his desire in numbers chapter 11 verse 29 numbers chapter 11 we're reading from verse 29 and david uh, uh, moses desired that for the people of god to, and he said all everybody no exception and you are part of that everybody it's coming upon you today in Jesus' name. Numbers chapter 11, verse 29. And Moses said unto him, Envious thou for my sake, 
would God that all of all the Lord's people were prophets? He said, Would God, how I desire, how I pray, how I wish that all of God's people were prophets, and that the Lord will put a spirit upon them, upon them all. That's the same thing, universal promise of God, the outpouring of the Holy Ghost and the empowering by the holy ghost the energizing by the holy ghost that that will happen to everybody it says i would i pray i wish that all of god's people will become prophets who are prophets the people that receive revelation from god and they give that revelation back to the people and they reveal the mind of god the word of god is saying i wish all of god's people were preachers were prophets were pastors and then the lord will pour his spirit upon them and they'll declare the word of god without favor without fear in the power of the holy ghost the day has come the time has come and the lord will do it for you for me for us together in jesus name we're looking at isaiah chapter 40 for isaiah chapter 40 for this universal promise of the outpouring of the holy ghost upon you upon me upon every one of us and the lord says everyone that is thirsty everyone that is desiring everyone that is asking i'm going to pour out my spirit upon them i search after 44 verse 3 and i for i will pour water upon him that is thirsty any thirsty person here today praise the lord you'll get it and floods upon the dry ground i will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring it's coming in chapter 59 of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 59, we're reading from verse 21. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 21, as for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord, my spirit which is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, seed, says the Lord, from henceforth and forever when the holy ghost comes how long will he stay with us forever, forever. tell me again forever. tell me once again forever. forever what you are getting today you are never going to lose forever. will increase and flow and overflow in your life in your ministry in jesus name and when the time comes the time of challenge and the time of ministry to be able to get that word out to the people in the power of the holy ghost that holy ghost will manifest himself in your ministry and life at that situation that time in jesus name we're looking at matthew now chapter 3 matthew chapter 3 and then now we're told the title or the name of this scene that the lord is going to put upon you and going to put upon us all everybody say all and say i am part of that all god bless you you'll be part of that in matthew chapter 3 in matthew chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 8 matthew chapter 3 we're reading from verse 8 it says bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance and think not to say within yourselves we have abraham to our father for i say unto you that god is able of these stones to raise up children unto abraham again can you look up for a moment i'm saying that uh, you know these uh, prophets uh, you know some things they say the people there uh, they'll be they'll be saying how possible is this how can this be I'm, I'm i'm believing that even if you go to ask the people you go to ask john john the baptist can you explain this to me that you said that god is able to raise up stones to become children unto abraham and john might say well i remember i said that to raise up stones and then make them children unto abraham well i know that god is able to do all things maybe that's where they'll stop but we know that god said he'll take the stony heart out of those are the stones the people that hear the word of god and it's like water that you know gets on the stone never gets inside and the people that hear the word of god and it has no impact on them and no result on them and it's like you just pour water on the stone and you knock it you put fire even on and the fire will not affect the stone and the knocking will not affect the stone and 
no instruction will affect the stone and then god says i'm going to make those stony hearts i'm going to make them my children and i'm going to take the stony heart out of them and give them hearts of flesh and they will be mine and when i do that i'll pour my spirit upon them and because there are no more stony hearts but children of faith by like abraham they receive the spirit just like you're going to receive this morning and then the spirit will come upon you the stony heart is gone and god has raised up stones to become children unto abraham and then it goes on to say also in verse 10 now the axe is laid unto the root of the trees therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn that is cut down and cast into the fire now comes your promise i said now comes your promise it says i indeed baptize you with water unto repentance but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall, he shall, he shall baptize, you shall baptize me with the Holy Ghost and with fire. You know, when we have this Holy Ghost, uh, you know, what I said is, you know, there are people that, you know, it's, it's speaking in terms of the initial evidence, not the final evidence. It's the initial evidence. There's a continuing evidence. The fire, the fervency. Look at Elijah. It's not just the literal fire that came, but look at his spirit, a fiery, fervent man. And when they pray, when such people pray, you can see the fervency, you can see the fire. When such people preach, you can see the fire, you can see the fervency. When such people stand on a particular subject, you can see the fire, you can see the fervency. That's what you see when they stand before the enemy and they declare the truth before their persecutors. You can see the fire, you can see the fervency. That continues continuing evidence of the presence and the power and the prominence of the holy ghost in a person's life is more than you know all these uh, pentecostal churches they just come together and all they do is you know speak in tongues speak in tongues speak in tongues and it's a repetition of what they have spoken for about 10 years they say once uh, you know they feel like they want to speak in tongues again they just bring it out again is that something i put in the book and they bring it out and then when temptation comes there's no fire there's no fervency when understanding of the bible is needed there's no understanding of the bible and when you need to explain ask a question in the bible there's no proper answer to the, they don't know it's only speaking in tongues that's only the initial evidence but the fire of the holy ghost and the power of the holy ghost coming upon us that is what we need and thank god it has come yeah. i said it has come yeah. uh, you know uh, the, those of us uh, who wear shoes now if you wear shoes this shoe that you lace does it says uh, whose shoes i'm not you know able to even uh, put the lace on then that string there now if there's something there just underneath that string we'll call it tongue that's the tongue of that shoe you understand what if uh, you know somebody has only the tongue of the shoe and it doesn't have the shoe itself and it's only carrying you know he puts the you know the tongue on the something there and it's just walking barefoot and say what's that it's the tongue of my shoe because the tongue of my shoe is the most important and then i just put it there i said but you're not wearing shoes I said never mind the tongue is there the holy ghost is what you need the power of the holy ghost is what we need and the fire and the fervency and the inspiration illumination enlightenment in the knowledge of the word of god that we never knew before and then when we look at that word it comes afresh with power and with pungency unto us and then we declare it without fear without favor and the people they are asking what shall we do to be saved that evidence of making the people get under conviction and calling upon the lord as they hear the word of god that is the greatest evidence of the holy ghost in our lives and we're all going to have that in jesus name it says i didn't baptize you with water unto repentance but he that cometh after me is mightier than i whose shoes are not worthy to bear he shall baptize you with the holy ghost and with fire 
let's look now at uh, john chapter 14 john chapter 14 and the promises you know being expanded and explained and expounded unto us we're looking at john chapter 14 and we're reading from verses 16 and 17 it says and i will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that she may abide with you how long tell me out loud uh, have you ever seen some you know tongue talking people and feel with the holy ghost and feel the holy ghost and then when something happens they don't have anybody to encourage them and there's no voice on the inside that is encouraging them and when they get into sorrow into some traumatic situations there is nobody to comfort them and there is no comfort from within and then there are the people that are you know I, I can go to church today i don't think i can even read the bible because you know this happened and this happened and this happened and there's no comfort for them and the Holy Ghost that he, they say is living inside them never says a word, never comforts them, and never tells them, get up. This is the reason this has happened. This is the reason this has happened. You don't need to lose your conviction or your consecration. You don't need to lose your life. Think about people that say they have the Holy Ghost and they're committing suicide because a problem does this happen and I didn't see any pastor, I didn't see any comforter, I didn't see any help and they're still speaking in tongues and speaking in tongues and the more they speak in tongues, the more they have all these nightmares and all these things and, and feel with the Holy Ghost when the Holy Ghost comes, he is a comforter and he says in that verse 16 and he says, I will pray the Father and he shall give you who? another comforter that she may abide with you forever no wonder paul and silas began to sing the praises of the lord in the prison when their feet when the stalks they had the holy ghost and the holy ghost was comforting them when we have the holy ghost yes the initial evidence i'll tell you again the initial evidence is speaking in tongues but the comfort of the lord in your life and the comfort of the Holy Ghost in everything that you are passing through. This is happening and the Lord is explaining to you that's why that is happening. And that other thing is happening. What will bring confusion normally? What will bring depression normally? Then the Holy Ghost comforts you and he says, this is the reason for that. And then you are still able to go on. You are going to have that comforter. Another comforter that she may abide with you. How long? Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it saith him not neither knoweth him but ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be where in you it shall be in you that means that when you are in the congress is there when you are not in the congress you are back at home is there when your wife is you know trying to you know say this and that the holy ghost is there nearer to you than all your enemies and because of that you know the fire is there the comfort is there the hope is there the expectation is that the faith is there the word is there the scriptures are there the truth is there what else do you need we need the holy ghost I said we need the Holy Ghost. It's telling us in chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 7. It we're looking at chapter 16, verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient. It is profitable for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send. Tell me the next thing. Him, not it. There are some people that think that the Holy Ghost is like, uh, you know, the air. It's like the force. It's like, you know, whatever it is. That it doesn't have personality. Of course, it, it has personality. Because the Father, the Son, and then the Holy Spirit. As the Father has personality, he has personality. As the Son has personality, he has personality too. He said, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin. He will reprove the world of sin. You know what he's telling us? When you have the Holy Ghost, if you see sin anywhere, in anyone, in the church, outside the church, you will reprove that sin. It's not you. It's the Holy Ghost within. They say, I don't understand. Brother so-and-so, pastor so-and-so, anything, anytime he sees, Anything that is sinful, defiling, anything that is corrupting, 
he cannot keep quiet. I don't know. Even when you know you are telling him, say, mm hmm okay, that's right. I hear you. Immediately, when you finish, then there's something that rises up within him. It's the Holy Ghost. Many people don't understand. And they think that the people that never talk against sin, never reproach sin, and the people they can see, you know, stealing going on right there in front of them. They can see immorality going on there, adultery going on there in front of them. Uh, there's, some, there's no fire within. Everything is just cool and calm. And they're saying, well, people are people. People will do what they want to. Let, let's move on. Forget about all that. That's not the Holy Ghost. If those people turn around and then they begin to speak it, I say, hey, that's false. The evidence that the Holy Ghost is within you is that if you see sin, he will reprove the world of sin. And a, a, a preacher, a pastor, a minister, a leader that has the Holy Ghost dwelling within him, it will not just be in a church and you have worldliness there, sin there, evil there, corruption there, um, you know, kind of pregnancy there, abortion there. I mean, pregnancy with those teenage girls. And we'll just, you know, just having a crouch there and it's just saying, well, we love everybody. Well, I hope you'll, you know, settle all these problems and all these challenges that you, you know if you think about your future this uh, pregnancy may hinder your education it will not say this pregnancy may you know hinder your eternal life and hinder hinder your heaven may hinder your education but you know take care of yourself and mother don't you know it has happened it has happened just 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 keep cool and uh, you know just have the grace of god to manage everything that's the holy ghost when the holy ghost comes he puts a fire within you that you will not tolerate sin. You will not encourage sin. Now that you're going to gloss over sin. That's the presence of the Holy Ghost. All these churches, I don't understand them. They have the Holy Ghost, they have the Holy Ghost. And you see a lot of things there. You know, so somebody came to tell me and said that they went for a party to a particular place. You have all these uh, hundreds of thousands of people, and as they, you know, they were there and they shouted, "Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost!" And every as they were coming out, you know, somebody, you know, just uh, put light on the cigarette and started to smoke. And then they went to ask somebody. They say, "Ah." Look at this, that uh, the Holy Ghost is on all of us. That's what they said. And uh, the, the volume of speaking in tongues everywhere, everywhere. And then I saw somebody, immediately we came up, he just put uh, something. Uh, yes, uh, you know, that's what God said. That he will pour his spirit upon all flesh. Upon smoking flesh, upon drinking flesh, upon adulterous flesh, upon fornicating flesh, upon stealing flesh, upon all flesh. Do you believe that? There's repentance before that Holy Ghost will come. There's righteousness before that Holy Ghost will come. We need to understand so that we're not deceived. I pray you'll not be deceived. Come back to John chapter 16. I'm reading the in verse 8. And when he's come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness. And of judgment of sin because they believe not in me of righteousness because i go to my father and you see me no more of judgment because the prince of this world is judged already i have yet many things to say unto you but he cannot bear them now how be it when he the spirit of tell me you know the kind of false doctrine error you find among these tongue talking people holy ghost holy ghost holy ghost the error the false doctrine the mutilating of scripture and the corruption of scripture that you find in the midst of such people terrible that means then that is not the real thing when the real thing the holy ghost when he comes what it says when that holy ghost comes in his power when that holy ghost comes in his illumination when that holy ghost comes in his revelation it says what he's going to do is is the spirit of truth to start with he will guide you into what into all truths gather all the pentecostal churches in this land together and ask them the same question how does a person get saved this pentecostal church will tell you one thing 
well, this will tell you another thing. This will tell you another thing. This will tell you another thing. By the time you finish, you are confused. Get all the Pentecostal churches together and ask them, is there sanctification? Okay, if there's sanctification, what is the meaning? What's the experience of sanctification? Ask Pentecostal church number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, all of them, they're going to give you different answers to that sanctification. Do you believe that Jesus Christ will take his people away in the rapture? And then after that, there will be the great tribulation. Which one is false? Rapture or great tribulation? As Pentecostal church number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, they're going to give you different answers. But look, come back to the Bible and I say, how be it when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide, tell me, you into what? all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that he shall speak and he will show you things to come eschatology things to come he'll show us and that's the reason why we're saying that don't don't waste your time running here running there running to all these places because if they have the real holy ghost they'll come back to the bible the scripture will be at the center of the worship and the scripture will be at the center of the lives of the families of the ministers of the members of that whole church and then the evidence of the holy ghost will go out in the power of the lord and will go and preach the gospel the real gospel and people right left center everywhere will be giving their lives to the lord i pray it will start here it will start with you because the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off even as many as the lord our god shall call number two demanding god's unlimited provision demanding god's unlimited provision we're looking at luke chapter 11 luke chapter 11 we're reading from verse 5 luke chapter 11 verse 5 the lord is talking about prayer here he's talking about asking and receiving you're going to ask today and you're going to receive in jesus name from verse 5 and he said unto them which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him friend let me three loaves for a friend of mine in his journey is come to me and i have nothing to set before him and he from within shall answer and say trouble me not the, the door is now shut and my children are with me in bed i cannot rise and give the eyes unto you though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend yet because of his because of his tell me because of his importunity was importunity asking and asking and asking was importunity standing for more than one minute more than five minutes more than ten minutes and asking until you receive was importunity repeating that same thing oh lord you promised me this and you said this is unto all flesh i cannot go except i have this power i cannot go except i have this unction what can i do if i don't have this anointing oh you ask from this direction lord it is the it is the bread for your children i'm one of your children Children. Lord, it is your promise. Lord, it is what will give me the equipment and the authority and the power, the fire to be able to get the work done. Lord, without it, I will fail. Lord, if I don't have this, why am I a minister? Why am I a pastor? If I say I believe the scripture and the promise is unto me and I don't have this, so Lord, what will I do? How will I be able to do the work? You are committed to my hand. You ask from this angle, from the legal angle. Oh Lord, you said so. You said it's your covenant and you will not fail. You say it from the fire family angle you will give it to all your children you say from the employment angle you employed me and you put me in place that i should do this now i need the tool i need the equipment that will get it done you you say it from the general angle it's a general promise to everybody and i'm one of the people who said whosoever comes will not lack you are going to give lord i come you say it from all angles that's opportunity that's opportunity not not that after you present it in one direction and nothing comes then you just stand there and just stay there and then because the pastor said if your leg is spinning you you can sit down if you are pregnant you can sit down and if uh, you know you are tired you can say they, they said if we are tired we should sit down and of course of course you should sit down and then you sit down and then you bend your head when will they finish now because we need to take our breakfast are you there 
I said, are you there? Ah, ah, you are the person I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. But today, I said today, the power will come upon us in Jesus' name. Because of his importunity, it will rise and give him as many as he needed. Now let us look at this. He tells us in verse 9, and I say the conclusion of that, the result of that, and I say unto you, ask, it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If a son shall ask this from the family and go now, if a son shall ask bread of any of you that say, Father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, natural people, know how to give good gifts unto your children. Tell me the rest. How much more? How much more? How much more? How much more? Lord, when I ask mommy for breakfast, she gives me. When I ask daddy for this, uh, my clothing, he gives me. And this Holy Ghost is more important than my food. And this Holy Ghost is more important than clothing. Oh Lord, you will not deny me this. And my mother, he gives, she gives me the breakfast readily. My father gives me the clothing or whatever it is readily. How much more? How much more? Will you give the Holy Ghost unto me? Because I'm asking you. That's how to ask. And when you ask like that this morning, the Holy Ghost has come upon you already. It says, how much more? more shall your heavenly father it didn't say how much more shall their heavenly father you see your heavenly father i said you see your heavenly father now you're going to ask us another question the one that is living in adultery and fornication and stealing and robbery and smoking and drinking is god their heavenly father jesus said ye are of your father the devil now the religious people that will not believe the bible and jesus emphasized and emphasized and emphasized to them and they exalted their tradition above the commandment of the word of god you see their heavenly father okay look at this now he said if you have been able know how to give the good things to your children how much more shall your heavenly father you must be a child of god first a submissive child of god a real child of god a person that says lord your will is my will your desire is my desire and your passion is my passion what you say i accept and i will do is when he is your father your real father he will give the holy ghost to them to those who are children of god how much more shall your heavenly father give the holy spirit to them that ask him he will give you Ephesians chapter 3 Ephesians chapter 3 I'm reading from verse 20 now Unto him that is able to do Exceeding abundantly Above all that we ask or seek According to the power That worketh in us To him Unto him be glory In the church By, G, by Christ Jesus Throughout all ages world without end Amen He's able to do He will do it this morning it will give that Holy Ghost to you in Jesus' name. And then you are going to ask, when you ask, you are going to ask in faith. Everything you ask in faith, the Lord is going to do. In James chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 5. James chapter 1 verse 5. It says, if any of you lack wisdom, the wisdom of the Spirit. If any of you lack power, the power of the Spirit. If any of you lack knowledge, the knowledge of the Spirit. If any of you lack the fire, the fervency of the Spirit. If any of you lack, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally, abundantly, without any restriction or limitation, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, let him ask in faith nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and toss let not that man think that he shall receive any sin of the lord a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways i will not be a double-minded man 
If you're going to receive, instead of being a double-minded man, you'll be a single-minded man. That this is what I want according to the promise. This is what I want according to the provision you will receive. Coming to point number three, now declaring the gospel with unusual power. Declaring the gospel with unusual power. When you receive that anointing, when that power comes upon you, you then be able to declare the gospel with unusual power. And let's come back to Acts of the Apostles chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, we're reading from verse 8. Because this is the very reason why the Holy Ghost power was given. Not just to talk in tongues. Talking in tongues is okay. It's all right. That's the initial evidence. But then the power, the demonstration of the power. That's what God is telling us about. And it says, so you receive power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And then it says, and ye shall be witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth, you have that power today. And when you have that power, you declare the gospel. You'll preach the gospel with fervency, with fire, with power, with assurance, with conviction. And it will convict the people. Micah chapter 3 verse 8. Micah chapter 3. We're reading there from verse 8. Micah chapter 3. Reading from verse 8. But truly... I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. You see that? Here this man said, this minister said, and this a prophet of God said, truly, without any shadow, I feel it in my, in my soul. I sense it in my spirit. I know it the way the Lord is moving me. I, I know that. He said, truly, without any shadow of doubt, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might to declare, declaring the gospel with unusual power to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. That's what the Holy Ghost power does when he comes. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 15. When the Holy Ghost indwells within you. When the Holy Ghost is moving you and saturates your life. Luke chapter 1 verse 15 For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord And shall drink neither wine nor strong drink And he shall be, tell me Filled with the Holy Ghost Do you see what the Lord is saying here? He's saying that he will not drink He will not be a drunkard And say be filled with the Holy Ghost He will not be intoxicated with politics And say be filled with the Holy Ghost he will not be intoxicated with human opinion, human idea, drunk, drunk with opinion and drunk with politics as with wine. No intoxication. It says, he shall not drink, shall neither drink wine, nor strong drink. And then he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. That's the evidence. That is the evidence. That is the evidence that when that Holy Ghost comes, the wisdom, the insight, the vision, the passion, the conviction to turn many people unto the Lord. That's the evidence of the presence of the Holy Ghost. And then it says, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. That's Elijah. To turn, to turn the hearts of the fathers unto the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Brothers and sisters, let's look up here. You know, as you look at the continent of Africa, and a lot of, a lot of preaching is going on. I, you know, as I travel around beyond Africa, and they tell me, they say that the center of gravity of Christendom, Christianity, has shifted to Africa. And I say, how did you come to that conclusion? Who oh, they say, we we'll see on the internet all these millions of people that are going to churches and are going to all these great meetings and we say that means that Christianity in Africa is the only thing now but as you look at all that are those millions of people being made ready for the coming of the Lord think about that 
and think about all the evil things that go on the magic the occultism and think about all the things that, you know you hear their stories and apart from hearing stories you see their lies you see the corruption in the offices and these are the millions millions of people that are rushing here and there what they were saying is when the real thing the holy ghost when he comes is going to so work within you and walk through you that you will be making people ready for the coming of the lord how do you make them ready without holiness without righteousness because it says the bride has made herself ready and then is clothed in white linen and the white linen is what the righteousness of the saints where is the righteousness i'm saying that the holy ghost coming upon us today he'll make us ready he'll prepare us and then he'll make you an instrument in the hand of the lord to make other people ready for the coming of the lord look at that verse 17 again we should all these traditions and all these uh, conventions of people that they have abandoned the scriptures and they'll say holy ghost holy ghost holy ghost without understanding what the holy ghost comes to do when it comes into our lives we need to kind of brush aside and lay aside and you know throw away all the conceptions of men all the things that men have brought in to pollute christianity and then we come back to the real world and the holy ghost if when the holy ghost feels all of us who are here and then you take that fire and then you take that knowledge and you take that understanding and take that pungency and power of the holy ghost and you take it everywhere in this country and this continent this continent will change i said this continent will change already we know politicians cannot change any nation you already know am i right they cannot they cannot politicians they have their own agenda and their manifesto but they cannot change the nation the change of any nation and the change of any society and community is in the hand of the people preachers who are filled with the holy ghost and then we go everywhere we're not compromising we're not mutilating anything we're saying the right thing and telling the people this is the way and when you say that in the power of the holy ghost we are the instruments in the hands of the almighty god that will bring the change in every nation in the continent of africa in jesus name look at it in verse in verse 4 15 look chapter 1 verse 15 for you will be great in the sight of the lord ah i've lost my crown i'm going to start all over again and you know you, you know sometimes you put all these uh, wires and what do you call them you plug them into the socket and then there's a break somewhere you look at your what is it a recorder at your computer you punch this and nothing is moving then you go and look at oh there's no connection if there's no connection between me and you when we plug this and plug this there's nothing there's connection now you know, I, I just went to check up i just went i didn't i push it in very well when i push it in then i punch this and then the thing just comes up like this and you are coming up because now divine connection in your life that the power of heaven and the glory of heaven and the anointing of the holy ghost will connect with your life today in jesus name look at it in verse 15 and you will be great in the sight of the lord you will neither drink wine or strong drink and you will be filled with the holy ghost and many of the people in your nation you will turn to the lord their god you will go before him in the spirit and power of elijah and you will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and it is obedient to the wisdom of the just you will make you you here that i see here today you are the people you will make people ready and prepared for the coming of the lord why don't you stand up and say lord i accept that i receive that that is mine the power the promise is unto you and to your children and to them that are far off even as many as the lord our god shall call it is yours make your connection right now it is yours make your connections right now and put your plug in that power of the holy ghost and say oh lord here i come here i come divine connection divine connection divine connection connect to that power now connect to that source now you're born again you're sanctified you are cleansed and all those dr the drunkenness is gone the smoking is gone and all those works of the flesh they are gone plug in 
plug in plug in and connect right now let the power come upon you let the power come upon you and you shall receive power and you shall receive power after that the holy ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem and in judea and in samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth the power the anointing of the holy ghost coming upon your life here it is now here it is now here it is now let him come let him come let him come and feel you to overflowing and feel you to overflowing and touch your life and touch your life and touch your life every part of you let him touch you right now let him feel you right now let him saturate you right now let him saturate you because when he comes he'll baptize you in the holy ghost he must be in the holy ghost wait upon the lord i say unto you wait upon the lord they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength they'll mount up with wings as eagles they will run they will run they will run they will not be weary and then it says they will walk and they will not fade the holy ghost is yours 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 the promise is unto you and to your children and to them that are far off even as many even as many even as many as the lord our god shall call the power to preach the power to pray the power to stand firm the power to do exploits the power to preach the word with anointing and fire and fervency that power is there that power is there that power is there that power is there plug in right now connect right now i say lord here am i lord here am i lord here am i ask him for from every angle as a child of god ask him as a minister of the gospel ask him as an instrument in the hands of the lord ask him as an employee in the kingdom of god ask him ask from every angle if you've been evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more how much more how much more shall your father who is in heaven give the holy ghost to you while you are asking him the power to do the power to perform the power to live the life of the kingdom and the power to be who the lord wants us to be he saying ask it shall be given you seek and you shall find knock it shall be opened unto you for everyone that asketh receiveth the one that knocketh it is open he that seeketh findeth which of you if your child will ask bread will you give him a stone if he ask an egg will you give him a serpent how much more then will god give the holy ghost to the people that are asking him to the people that are asking him the lord is telling you that when you have that holy ghost yes the tongues will come beyond the tongues above the tongues what continues in your life the understanding of the scripture beyond the tongues and above the tongues what comes upon you the enlightenment illumination of the scripture illumination explanation exhortation of the scripture the expounding of the scriptures you have that too right doctrine right doctrine right doctrine right doctrine will come when the holy ghost comes because he is the inspirer of the truth it will guide you into all truth and it will tell you all things all things all things whatsoever i have said unto you you ask the lord you ask the lord you ask the lord it is yours it is yours it is yours it is yours and when he is come he'll be the comforter he'll be the comforter he will be the comforter there will be no challenge in your life that will not comfort you you'll not be a confused minister a perplexed minister a depressed minister he'll show you the way he'll show you the way he'll show you the way when problems arise in the church the only goes a solution it will show you the solution it'll give you the solution and then it will strengthen you strengthen your backbone you will not be tired you will not be weak not be weary you not be fainting when the holy ghost comes he comes with anointing he comes with power he comes with understanding it will come now he has come already 
and the Lord is saying receive let my power activate you and motivate you and then move on in the power of the Holy Ghost in your life and say Lord here am I Lord here am I Lord here am I God is raising up a people of power a people endued with the Holy Ghost a company of people an assembly of people anointed energized enveloped in the power of the Holy Ghost a universal promise a universal promise a universal promise the promise is unto you the promise is unto you today the promise is unto you today and to your converts 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 and to all as many as the Lord our God shall call as the Lord our God shall call when the Holy Ghost comes you'll run you'll not be weary when the Holy Ghost comes, your walk you'll not be you'll not faint. When the Holy Ghost comes, you will preach, you'll not be tired. When the Holy Ghost comes, you will pray without fainting. When the Holy Ghost comes, there'll be no confusion, there'll be no tiredness, there'll be no discouragement. When the Holy Ghost comes, power, fire, fervency will come upon your life. When the Holy Ghost comes, truth will come, error will vanish away. For soon will vanish away. When the Holy Ghost comes, he'll sweep away every form of error, every form of falsehood. When the Holy Ghost comes, you'll be able to earnestly contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints. Let him come. Let him come. Make your connections right now. Make your connections right now. Make your connections right now. Make your connections, your connections right now. Any break in your connection? Any break in your connection? Make the connection and say, Lord, I receive Holy, the Holy Ghost today. I receive your power today. I receive the anointing today. The fervency and the fire, the stamina and the sustainers. Lord, I receive that by the coming of the Holy Ghost. And you forsake all intoxication all intoxication the wine of popular opinion you forsake all that and the wine of popular psychology intoxicating people and the wine of being power driven you forsake all that and the wine of pharisaic tradition you forsake all that the wine of denominationalism Pushing people, pushing people, pushing people. You forsake all that. And the real wine in their beer parlor. You forsake all that. And the concentration of the works of the flesh. The influence of the works of the flesh. Influence of Sodom, influence of Egypt. You forsake all that. Influence of Babylon. You forsake all that. Say, Lord, I receive. Lord, I receive. The spirit of truth. And no other comforter. Let the power come. Let the power come. Let the power come. Let him energize you. Sustain you. And as we go out of this place, we're going out in that fire, in that fervency. And you're telling the Lord, Oh Lord, here am I, a candidate for the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Immersed in the Holy Ghost. Saturated with the Holy Ghost empowered by the Holy Ghost enveloped by the Holy Ghost the promise is unto you the promise is unto you the promise is unto you and to your children to your converts to your followers to your members and to all and unto all and unto all and unto all and unto all as many as the Lord our God shall call all of them in the upper room received all of them in Samira received all of them in the house of Colinus received it's unto all it's unto all and to what I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh I will pour my spirit upon all flesh upon your sons upon your daughters upon the old men upon the young men upon my servants upon my handmaids I'll pour my spirit in those days 
and they shall prophesy and they shall dream and they shall see vision and they will go places and they will do the work of the lord and they will serve me without being tired without being weak or weary i am full of power by the holy ghost and full of power by the spirit of the lord to declare to declare to declare the seeds of jacob of the nation unto the nation full of power full of power full of power when you're full of power there'll be no place for weakness there'll be no place for fainting when you're full really full really full of power there'll be no place no vacancy for worry for anxiety for fear for trembling for cowardice power i give unto you power the power to preach the power to pray the power to pursue the power to persevere the power to stand courageously I give unto you power I give unto you power I give unto you power yes I'm going to the Father when I get to the Father I will pray the Father I will pray to the Father and he will say it his promise the promise of the father upon you but what in jerusalem but what in jerusalem but what in your jerusalem until 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 ye be in deal with power from on high for john truly really baptized with water unto repentance but he shall be baptized with the holy ghost not many days days but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth unto your village unto your city far away places far away places uttermost part of the of the of the earth is coming and as that spirit comes upon you that power comes upon you that anointing comes upon you you'll go to all the places the lord is sending you to you'll not be afraid you'll not be thinking in the flesh you'll not be reasoning with the flesh You'll be looking at circumstances. You'll not be wondering, can I make it? Can I do it? Can I go? Can I can I accomplish? You will know that this is the hour of his power. And the people shall be willing in the days of his power. That power is there now. That power is there now. That power is there now. Make your connections. Make your connections. Make your connection from with heaven. And say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. I'm making my connection. Making my connection. Connection with power. Connection with anointing. Connection with authority. Connection with the unction from the spirit. Of the spirit. Connection. 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 No more weakness. No more weariness. No more idleness. The power has come. Go in this thy power and be a valiant man, a valiant woman. Go in this thy power. The power of the Spirit was evident in the life of Moses. That power should be evident in your ministry. The power of the Spirit was evident in Elijah. And Elisha, that power should be evident in your ministry. And when Samuel anointed David, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. And everybody and everybody saw that. 
that power should be evident in your life and ministry. Came upon Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Micah, all those prophets. Are you not the prophet of the Lord? A proclaimer of this everlasting gospel. Let that power be evident in your ministry. Make your connections. Make your connections. And say, Lord, I am connected to the power from on high. I'm connected to the power of the Holy Ghost. You have connection with heaven. Connection with the Father. Connection with His only begotten Son. Connection with the Holy Ghost. Connection with the Holy Ghost. He feels you. He dwells you. Saturates you. Empowers you. He dwells you. Now you will go. Now you will go. And prepare the people ready for the coming of the Lord. Prepare the people ready for the coming of the Lord. Go and teach with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Go and preach with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Go and enlighten the people. Open their blind eyes. With the inspiration and influence of the Holy Ghost. Go and correct all those false doctrines. In the energy of the Holy Ghost. Go and turn the minds of the people. The hearts of the people back unto God. In the power. By the influence of the Holy Ghost. Go and plant the churches. In the power of the Holy Ghost. Go and tell them, go and tell them, not just with a natural voice, but go and tell them in the power of the Holy Ghost. Let the anointing abide, let the anointing remain, let the unction and the power of the Holy Ghost remain, abide. The Lord said it will be forever, the anointing forever. The comfort forever, the power forever, the vision forever, the dreams forever, the fervency forever, the fire is going to be forever, the illumination is going to be forever, the influence is going to be forever. The revival is going to be forever. The freshness is going to be forever. Power. Anointing. Unction. Illumination. Inspiration. Willingness. The success. The fruitfulness. The effectiveness all going to be forever. The comfort of the Holy Ghost forever. That indwelling of the Holy Ghost forever. Welcome Him. Welcome Him. Welcome Him. Let him abide forever.